I think part of our responsibility is to help people to heal because there's power in that. Indeed. And when you don't heal, you know, what it does, it creates a, a bigger sore, you know? Yeah. So it starts off tiny. It seems like a little scratch. Right. You know, but every bad experience can tap right back into that scratch and, and make it a, a much larger place. Yeah. To the point where you become a sore. Yeah, exactly. Okay. To exactly. other people. Um, you know, the saying goes, hurt people, hurt people. Hurt people. Mm-hmm. And so when we see that, you know, how does that impact us? Hey, it's Hit Me Angles, and we thank you all for joining us. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe to our channel. We want to grow our community. We want to be able to interact with you and share with you. So please leave your comments. Let us know if you have any topics you want us to share or talk about. We're excited about interacting with you and maybe even have you on the show sometime. Hey, welcome back, family. It's Hitting the Angles again, and I'm here with Mike and Arthur. And today we are talking about being well-rounded. And I understand that the importance of being well-rounded will affect every area of your life if it's not implemented. You agree with that, Arthur? agree 100% with it, especially with trying to have a family, trying to start business, and trying to just enjoy life. Being well-rounded is the balance you need in that household. Everything is 360, you know, uh, health, finances, relationships, you know, business, everything is 360. And you have to be well-rounded, not only with uh, how you apply yourself, but um, how you carry yourself. Amen to that. I have learned that over my life that. You know, you have so many aspirations and ideas about what kind of person you want to be, what you want to be involved in. But I also recognize that sometimes we're so passionate about certain things that, you know, it really takes some skill to become well-rounded because, you know, you can overdose on anything. Yeah. You know, and you can really go into something and become, you know, a workaholic or you could become a person that's so domesticated that that's the only thing you know how to do. And, Mm -hmm. you know... It's important to keep that healthy balance, but it, it's not a game. It definitely takes some ingenuity and strength and skill to be able to make that balance work for you because, you know, society always sets up what the ideal situation, family, relationship, business is supposed to look like. And when you try to follow those ideals when you're in your particular situation, those, you know, cookie cutter pieces don't always fit together to make the right puzzle for you. So, I know for me, spiritually grounding myself is what has been the easiest way for me to become well-rounded because, you know, when you have your relationship right with God, then everything else kind of falls into place. And even if it doesn't, it kind of helps you to work your way through it so you're not so overwhelmed by what you think isn't working. Mm -hmm. And that's what I appreciate, uh, you know, about being spiritually grounded is that even if, you know, things look like they're not working out, I know Honestly, you know, behind everything that's going on, that is always working out. Indeed. So I don't have to stress out. Well, if you if you look at where you are today. Oh, man. Then you have the past as confirmation. We've all at this age been through a lot of things, some a little more, uh, you know, trying than other times. But we're still here. Thank God. We're still that. prospering. We're still growing and things. So as far as I'm concerned, it's nothing in life that's made that can break me yet because I've been through a lot and I'm still here. I love it. I can it. smile. Mm. I can do that. I can, you know what I mean? So, Absolutely. Uh, 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 you know, I'm fortified. Yes. I'm fortified because really, you know, and like you say, processes of being well-rounded and coming to a rounded you yeah, takes a lot of attention. You know, and there's a lot to guide your attention away from that. You know, distractions, just life. You know what I mean? Period. So you have to take that and then take the knowledge that we come across and the lessons that we learn, you know, and going through our day to day to create a well-rounded. So it brings about the question, 
if society is not setting the standard or, or, you know, the government or school and things of that nature, where do you get your basis for being well-rounded? Uh-oh. How do you, how do you, you know, judge to say, you know, well, this is a well, a well-rounded me, you know, or whatnot. What's the basis that you use? Yeah. What's your basis, Arthur? That's a good question. I think of it this way right here. If I'm at edge at everything someone say to me, if you speak to me, I'm jumping. If I can't go into a situation and examine that situation, that already shows there's an imbalance somewhere. Mm-hmm. Cause I shouldn't be right. pushing every time something comes to me. If my kids say something to me, ready to start screaming and hollering. That doesn't mean that my kid is, is doing something that bad. That means that my life is not bad. Balance, right. self regulation. That's so good. So it has to be a point where you have to examine yourself. Am I getting the rest that I need? Uh-oh. Am I doing the study that I'm studying? Am I eating balance field? Am I going out the mat? Cause, you know, it only takes one thing to throw your balance. That's so true. It does. You, you can go eat. You can do everything well and be eating at McDonald's every day, and you're off balance because that's right. not healthy that's for right. the body, and that that can create the problem. Not resting, not meditating, not exercising. I mean. And not studying, and those are the things that I have to. I had to learn from not from not society so much as from my grandparents and watching them and watching my grandfather. My grandfather was was blind, mm-hmm. but he was a minister and raised a farm. Wow! Nice. And he never really got to the point he got upset about anything. He could always logically look at anything and come up with a solution. Indeed, yeah. yeah. But that came from the fact my grandfather, he had, his, everything was set on the schedule for him. Right. And it worked great. And I think that's where, if we're going to get to the balance, let's move out balance. We have to go in there and understand that every part of it is important. There's it not is. a part right. of, the, of, the, of being healthy or getting rest or studying that's not important. And that's the thing that we have to learn as human beings. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I think your life will definitely yeah. tell on you. You know, as you get older, you recognize that some of the things that we used to do when we were younger, you know, seem so simple and easy. And as you progress in age, you recognize that, you know, it takes a little bit more, you know, to do some of the smallest things. Yeah. And um, I have an appreciation for that because even though we're getting older, the fact is that we're still here. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's a blessing within itself. So, you know, I, mean, I definitely don't feel like I'm in my 20s, but I still feel youthful and dynamic. I oh, still yeah, feel like indeed. I'm able to accomplish some wonderful things at this stage of life. And because I'm wiser now and I'm smarter, you know, some of the decisions that I make turn out a whole lot better than they did back then because yeah. I'm actually applying the wisdom that I have yeah, exactly. and the knowledge, you know, that I've gained, you know, because your parents, they instill as much as they can in you. But, you know, we've experienced a lot of things that our parents know nothing about. So, you know, it kind of makes it difficult, you know what I'm saying, to apply certain things, you know, because times are always changing. You got to be innovative. You got to be creative. You got to be flexible, work with the times and all that kind of thing. So that's a part of being well-rounded, too, is being flexible. And I have learned that the hard way and the easy way. And I much rather I get the easy way. (laughs) Yeah. You know, any way that you take. Uh, is your way. Right. You know, you make that way. It could be easy or hard for you. Yeah. You perspective. Know? We back perspective. There again. Exactly. Whether whether you want to apply what you have learned right. to make it easy, you know, or whether you, you know, you want to uh, take the, the other route and, and create a way, which may be a little bit harder, not necessarily all the time bad. True. You know, if you follow the path that is laid, That's an easy path, but you may end up somewhere you didn't intend on being. That's correct. But if you create a path and create a way for yourself, you know exactly where you're going and you know exactly where you're going to end up because you're making the way. Oh, that's so powerful. But you have so when you talk about making a path, you realize that things are always changing on that path and you have to be willing to change with that path. Yeah. What I mean by that is when I was in my 20s, and I could talk about business a lot because that's what I've done a lot. I can get up. I remember one time I would go to I'll drive all the way to D.C., send a presentation, get back in my car, come back home, give me a couple hours sleep, 
and go to work. Mm-hmm. I can't do that. I can work all the time. Now, I'm still going down the same same path in life, but I understand things change. That's so right. now, instead of me being a hard worker and working, I now have to become a teacher mm-hmm. and teach other people how to come in by me teaching them. I'm making an ecosystem that I can survive in and they, they can survive in. And I'm willing to accept that there are going to be changes in life. And if you either embrace changes or you fight them, once again, you unbalance. Mm-hmm. So you cannot true. stop aging. I mean, much as we don't want to age, right. <laughs> we cannot stop. And what we did in our 20s, Kate, none of us still do now without some assistance from someone. And we have to appreciate that and say, okay, this is where I'm weak at now. Now I have to share me and share that with someone else and bring that out. Real quick off the subject, though, we have to, as a team, as a human being, realize that we have to accept the fact that there's things we can't do no more and be willing to share those. And we shouldn't keep those things inside and hold them in so that we don't share with other people. Right. right. And don't. And I think that's a part, a great part of being in balance is being able to share. Yeah. Vulnerability. Yeah, Because over time, that's how knowledge has been passed. That's correct. You know, you share your experiences and, and your joys, your pains, your lessons with others so that it may help someone else. It may not be today. It may not be tomorrow, but sometime down the road. Right. The knowledge that we pass or the knowledge that we have gained from someone passing to us clicks and we're like, okay, this is this is how I need to move. That's very, very important that we are communicating these lessons to one another. A lot of, you know, I've heard people, older people say, you know, well, you can't talk to the youth today. I don't mess with them. You know, I mean, hey, you know, it's not my child. You know, you can't just say anything to any people's child, you know, perspective. That's where the gap and the failing has come. That's correct. You know, when people choose to not say something, when people choose not to correct those who are coming up behind us, could you imagine if our leaders before us would have been like, hey, you know what I mean? Uh, Hey, those ain't my people, you know. I I can't tell them how to move or what to do or what to think. And you know what I mean? So uh, at some point or another, you know, we have to step up and take responsibility for those coming behind us. Someone was responsible for us. Yes. See, once so, again, go ahead. Mm-hmm. I mean, cut you off. Go ahead. No, no, it's all good. I was just saying we have to take more responsibility, which in the future will create a more well-rounded atmosphere yes, for everyone because we're passing on knowledge that not just helps us, but helps other individuals. The world is created of individuals. So the better the individual, the better the whole collective world. We have to be more responsible. Just like society tells us, when we pass away, when we leave to our family, we want to leave money. We want to leave assets. And we work towards that goal. Nine times in a large group of families I see that that's passed on, they lose it. Right. Mm-hmm. Because society tell you that, but that's not the most important thing that you leave and you've hit on it. Exactly. That's right. It's knowledge. It One is. thing I do, I, I have journals that I write. Mm-hmm. Someone taught me this years ago. The most important value that you can leave to anyone is your experiences. Yes. Now, not money, your experiences. And I write journals and I write down the good things that happen to me. I write the bad things so that as when I get ready, when the day do happen, that not only will I pass on my assets, I'll have those journals so my children can sit down and read those journals and say, and then when they recognize, oh, that's how daddy did with this. Right. Right. Because, you know, no disrespect, my dad, I love him to death, but my dad sort of left me clueless when it came to the world. Mm hmm. I come Christmas morning, there was toys in my thing. I believe some man brought it. Oh no, they ain't trying to trying to take Don't give any yes. glorification to Santa. Yes. And I didn't understand that it took work. It, right. He had to go out there and he had to suffer to get those things. Because my dad was he didn't want us to know that. Right. You know, when things were tight in there, he would just go to his own room or he would handle that outside the house. And so we're just coming there, man. 
Bills are always paid. There's dinner here. There's no problems in the world. This is great. I can't wait to grow up and be like my daddy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then all of a sudden you get out there and like, whoa, man, why, why are you calling me Duke Power? You don't call me like that. Why right. are you calling me every day about this bill? Now you're threatening to cut off. Hey, I got kids. Oh, that don't even work? Right, yeah. You know? <laughs> oh, that don't work? But my dad, we never had this problem. Yeah, what you mean powerful. the car payment's behind? You come to repossess. I've never seen this before. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. We think right. we're protecting our children. Yes. We really do. In a lot of ways, we think that the things that we've struggled with are not something we should share with them. But honestly, that's what builds character. That's what built it in us. That's what's going to build it in them. And yeah. so you, there's a way to share it because, right. you know, at certain ages, you're only able to handle certain yes. types of information. So, you know, we, we don't want to, you know, destroy their hopes and their dreams and their right. beliefs that, you know, life can be easy in certain aspects, you know, because a lot of conversation is you got to work hard and you're only going to get it if you work hard. And that's not always true. Sometimes no. people are blessed and they haven't worked hard and that's OK. Mm-hmm. Um, you need to be prepared if that situation happens where you have to work hard mm-hmm. and you have the worth ethic to be able to do that. Right. But we don't want to create an environment where we believe that everything we gain only comes by hard work because that's an unfavorable perspective. It is. Mm-hmm. That's a I don't want to work hard yeah. all the time. Exactly. I just don't. Let's just be honest for like five minutes. OK, I want to be able to have some ease to my day. Mm-hmm. I want some things to just flow and work out for me. And the beauty that I find in having my spiritual connection is sometimes God just shows up and does stuff and I go. Where in the world yeah. did that come from? Yeah. But thanks, God. Thank you. That was you know, awesome. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate yeah. that. You know how people just bless you out of the blue? You know, they just have the heart to want to do nice things for you or give you things you didn't ask for. But that was a path that you laid be- before. Absolutely. You know, that's a path you laid before uh, through interactions, through connections. You know what I mean? Through a word you shared wow. that made someone feel enough that in hindsight they said, hey, you know what? I think Samaya would like this. Yeah. You know what? I think Mike could use these seeds. You know? Let me call him up. It's, it's the path that you lay for yourself. That's so beautiful. You live the life you love and love the life you live. Yeah. Every day, every day should be built to cater to the next day to make every other step easier. That's how when you're applying knowledge and you're building your future, right? You take the steps that makes your future a little more secure, a little more easy. Mm -hmm. Um, The concept of back to eating gardening is where you establish a garden that over time it maintains itself. That's good. And, And if you look at a jungle setting, you know, the leaves fall off the trees, you know, they fertilize the ground, any seeds or whatnot that fell from the fruit of the trees, they germinate, they grow. It's self-sustaining. It comes back. It does its thing each and every year because the steps that were taken were making a easier environment for down the road. Wow. Same thing, same concept needs to be applied to everything we do. In order to make dinner easier to cook the next time, we wash dishes this time. Right. We meal We clean the kitchen now. Oh, yeah. As you you go. Some people, you know, you you may prep your food ahead of time and have things laid out or you see pre-season, you know, your food to let it marinate so that when you approach it the next time, the next step is easier, easier, easier. That's the way you build everything for the future. You want your kids to have an easier future. You want to pass knowledge to them. They should sit down and discuss bills with you. Yeah. And let them let them let them um, see you paying bills and looking at the numbers and going over that. That's a proper knowledge. Yes, it is. You know, um, teaching them to cook, teaching them to farm, you know, helping them to understand, you know, the truths and lies of society. Most of the time, we we only want to uh, shield them and protect them, you know, from um, our perception of the good and the bad. Wow. Society's perception, uh, perception of the good and the bad. Very true. But there's a lot that we don't give them that we need to. Like you said, 
you know, you, you know, we never seen our parents paying bills or struggling to pay bills right. and things of that nature. Kids needs a, a honest and balanced understanding of what it takes to maintain a household, the struggle and all. Right. We got to give them a strong foundation, you know, because yep. what I do recognize sometimes about this generation is their ability to handle crisis, handle mm-hmm. issues, traumas, things like that. It seems like sometimes their ability to stay grounded is so shaky. Um, you know, they are so easily uprooted from what makes them comfortable. Mm -hmm. You know, that it seems like, you know, their ability to be able to stand those tests and those trials that come is so wavering. It's 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 scary, honestly. And I know that that is partially because of us. Is it any more wavering than ours was at that time? I don't know. I I definitely think it's it's perspective uh, because our parents may have been thinking those same things about us. Right. Absolutely. Like they can't handle this. Sure. You're right. Absolutely right. But I definitely think that, you know, we made some decisions. I know I can speak for myself in how I connected and taught things to my children that I know I didn't have. Right. In right. terms of what my parents, you know, felt like was important or integral into making me a healthy, strong, balanced individual. You know, we participated in a lot of things. I'm thankful you know, for my upbringing. I learned a lot. I participated in a lot. Um, And, you know, I made some decisions, you know, based off my upbringing, you know, that I feel were fruitful and beneficial. But I also feel like, you know, the liberty and the freedom, you know, that I wish that I would have had in certain areas. At this stage of life, I'm glad that I did not. Yeah. I'm so thankful. Yeah. Because I could see myself on a totally different path right now had that been the case. Yeah. So those things are are beneficial. You know, when you look back, sometimes you think, you know, your parents were the worst, you know, in terms yeah, of how and, they and, disciplined you and handled you yeah, and, and situations, you know, yeah. the way that they, you know, went about handling problems and talking to you and things like that. But I have a love and an appreciation for people being where they are. I have one more so now than I ever have before. Mm-hmm. So now I can look back at those situations and say, that's where they were. Right. They utilized what they had at the time. And so I got the benefit of where they were. And that was good enough for them. Mm-hmm. And now my children have the benefit of where I am now and what I have to offer them. And the beauty is that I feel like the relationship I have with my children now is we share with each other. Right. You know, I'm not just pouring into them. I'm learning some things from them. Mm-hmm. You know, that helped me to be a better person, help me be more well-rounded, if you will. Yeah. And yeah. I love that. I yeah. love that we have that kind of connection where we can share with each other and learn from each other. Because sometimes you think, you know, that you've arrived. So, you know, you know so much more because you're older and you're wiser. So learning from your kids kind of sounds crazy, but. Oh, no. Man, I learn from them all the time. A wise person knows that even the fool has something to teach you. Amen to that. You know, um, I love, love learning from the youth because the youth has a uh, untainted vision Pure. of That's a lot right. of things, you know, that their perspective is something to adhere to because it is a pure, you know, we can't see things in a certain manner because of experiences That's correct. has has built walls and even put blinders on us about a lot of situations. But through a child's eyes, oh, man. you know, and especially through a child's mouth, sometimes they come out <laughs> their mouth, you know, and they'll tell you exactly what it is. Yes. And it's going to be the truth, you know. Um, and, but like you said, to, to be able to learn in all situations from everyone, um, age groups and whatnot. Right. That is a blessing. That's a characteristic of being well rounded. I like it. Yes, yes, sir. When you're when you're that open right to learning. I uh I learned a lot of wonderful things um just from paying attention when I was young. And in hindsight now I feel very blessed that those those abilities or characteristics was in me that I thirsted for knowledge yes. from my elders. 
because I sought the elders that had an easier way. Right. You know, through my perception, um, you know, I grew up with nine brothers and sisters. You know, that's money was tight. So when I seen people who had made an easier way, I wanted to talk to them, you know, and share in conversation. And, and you know, when they spoke knowledge of a, a right path to go or um, a manner of thinking uh, about situations, I was interested in that. Right. I took that and I internalized it because it through my vision, they found a way yeah. to make it a little bit easier. So I want to hear what they have to say. That was something that I feel blessed to have had when I was younger. Did I apply all that knowledge? No. You know, <laughs> over the years, you know, I, you know, I had to find my own way. Oh, of course. You know what I mean? Experience is the greatest teacher. It is. Uh, but those bits and pieces of knowledge that I acquired from elders over the years um, was really, really helpful. You know, I'm yeah. glad that I was able to internalize that as a as a child and then was able to apply it as an adult when I found myself in those situations, you know. Um, so give the knowledge, give the proper ways. Like you said, your journals, yeah. you know, leave that because not today, not tomorrow, but sometime down the road, right. that goodness, that seed will grow something very, very fruitful and beautiful. We should value the same way we allow our children to come in. And and we sometimes my son, bless them, I, I got three boys and I have one daughter. They will wake up in the morning and they will tell me something and I'll, and I will let them go as far as they can. Mm-hmm. I will try to hold up before. And then if they do fall, I don't go off on, oh, man, you ain't nothing. That's why I, I shouldn't have never did with you. I will sit down with them, educate, we'll talk about it, yeah. and then we'll turn around and figure out what we've done wrong. That's the same way with anything we do in life, mm-hmm. yeah. whether it's business involved. The reason why we can't work together is because we don't allow us. We go in there, I'm not going to let somebody get over on me. A lot of times people are not getting over you. They just don't know. Yeah. Right. Because you don't have a civil conversation because guess what? Yep. That's another thing that society wants you to believe, that you can't work with nobody. Right. Because as long as you can't work with someone, oh yeah, you can never have, I don't care how hard you work at, if you cannot work with people, success is not going to happen. Right. Right. It's just too hard to get it by yourself. I tell people, one time I was speaking to someone, and um, they got mad. I said, God, he he's a jokester. Oh my God, never mind. Yes, he did. I said, God gives you the independence to do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. You can do whatever you want in life. But he doesn't bless it until you're able to share it with someone else. Right. Mm. Exactly. That's good. That's beautiful. You have to be able to share. Yeah. You can't hold it in. You can't look at everybody like they are the worst people on earth. We're so quick. To have a reason not to do. Right. Right. It also hindered us from doing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You you approach a situation with an open mind. You approach people, you know, and I, I say me, I carry the philosophy that I love you first, period. Correct. Mm-hmm. I love you. You know, you are my people. I need each and every individual. I love you first until you give me a reason not to. People say, you know, why you always say yes, ma'am. I say yes, ma'am to my daughters. I say yes, ma'am to my three-year-old daughter. I say yes, ma'am to ladies and women all the time because I respect you first. That's correct. Until you give me a reason not to. Mm -hmm. And that's the way I approach every situation. I trust first. People say, oh, you know, that's, you know, that's kind of wavery right there. Of course, you know, you use the power of discernment. Correct. But I trust first until I have a reason not to. And that leaves me open for growth and yes. learning. So many more experiences. You know, it, I need each individual that comes across my path. You know, whether you came to bring help or harm. Right. It's a lesson. You're it's a learn lesson. Something. And I need those lessons to grow. The lessons that I've had in the past built me 
to what I am today. I appreciate those lessons. I appreciate the hard times, the bad times, the good times, all of, it. Know, all of that, because it's built me to what I am today. Yeah. And I appreciate me because now I am a better individual for my family and for society, for my friends. Yeah. But you got to look like you say, what builds us are mistakes. Yeah. And the reason yeah. why mistakes build us, because mistakes mean you went outside your norm. Right. And when you go outside your norm, if you're not used to a certain pattern, then the way you grow is you make a mistake. But the thing is, during that mistake, now, if you keep making the same mistake, good example, say if you went through five bad relationships and everybody's the same in the relationship, you're making the same mistake. You're not learning from it. Right. 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 But make it down to simple form. You should be learning from your mistakes to become a better person. And you shouldn't talk about your mistakes all the time. You no. should live in your mistakes. That's yeah. it. Man, every time I get this, it just always go back because you just already spoke it. You yeah. spoke it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you put exactly it out right. there. Exactly right. So part of being healthy is learning how to heal. And and I recognize, honestly, just from this journey that I'm on right now, that there are so many broken people. You know, that there are so many people who have not allowed themselves to be healed. Mm -hmm. um, and so that shows up in all their relationships, personal, professional. Right. You know, even their individual relationship with themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a very dangerous place um, because hurt is something that we all experience. But it's how you deal with it that makes the difference. And so. I think part of our responsibility is to help people to heal because there's power in that. Indeed. And when you don't heal, you know, what it does, it creates a, a bigger sore, you know? Yeah. So it starts off tiny. It seems like a little scratch. Right. You know, but every bad experience can tap right back into that scratch and, and make it a, a much larger place. Yeah. To the point where you become a sore. Yeah, exactly. Okay. To exactly. other people. Um. You know, the saying goes, hurt people, hurt people. Hurt people. Mm -hmm. And so when we see that, you know, how does that impact us? How does it make us change the way we operate with people? Do you have compassion and empathy towards people? Does it make you shun them and push them away because you don't really understand? You know, I am able to deal with people better when I understand the root behind their behavior. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes because of fear, we don't really want to know the reason. Right. We're not sure we can handle the reason. You know, we're not sure we want to even open that door, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I believe that when you mature and you grow, especially spiritually, you recognize that we are all integral parts of each other's lives. We're all connected in some kind of way. Yep. And the beauty of those relationships is that you should know that you're going to get something from everyone you come into contact with. Mm hmm. But you should want to be impactful in a way where people see you, you know, as a blessing and not as a curse. But sometimes those blinders on your eyes don't even allow you to see yourself the way you're really being projected out to the world. Right. And that's a scary place, too. Yeah. You know, because some people are in their own little bubble and they believe that that bubble is perfect. Mm -hmm. And if 10 people tell you that there's imperfections in your bubble... You might have some imperfections <laughs> in your bubble. And, and that, too, you know, uh, that goes over to a whole thing. Um, how do you perceive yourself uh -oh. as to how the other people perceive you and which one is the most strongest in guiding you? Yeah. You know, do you do you take the popular opinion of 10 people or do you take your own word for how you feel about yourself? Right. And let that be your foundation and your base. You know what I mean? Yeah. Do you change because other people want you to change? Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. We so definitely do sometimes. That, you know, that opens up a whole nother question Peer to go pressure. down another path. Yeah, you know? Yeah. Hey, inclusion is a heck of a drug. Oh, my. Everybody want to be included. How many likes did I get today? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, this was, I think, a very well-rounded conversation. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm so thankful that we get the opportunity to be able to just express ourselves, you know, authentically. I think people are looking for that now because, you know, the world is 
unfortunately, at this day and time with everything that's going on, there are people wearing masks, but not just the physical kind. Right. So, you know, sometimes we need to learn how to take the mask off so that, you know, people can see us. We can be vulnerable and show ourselves and expose ourselves so that, you know, people can see the true essence of who we are and appreciate that. And everybody won't. But. You know, we can feel comfortable sharing ourselves anyway. So thank you all for being with us today. We are so appreciative of this time we've had together. And hopefully you learned something or gained something from it. Leave us a comment. Subscribe. You know, talk to us and give us some feedback so that we can see, you know, if these conversations are helping you. If you have some conversation topics you want us to talk about, you know, we're open. We're excited, you know, about interacting with everyone out there. So please give us the benefit of your information and your knowledge so that we can grow to be more impactful. Yes, sir. Let's build this community. Indeed. All right. Hitting the angles and we're out. One love. 